Hello everybody, this is part two of the reactor tutorial. Today we're going to finally get that ice into the reactor and just see how it performs. We have our same setup right here. This is the same map and everything. I just made a few changes. So we're going to take that ice and put it in this reactor. I'll explain why that torch is there in a minute. I'm sure most of you already know. I know I said we were going to be using Thomcraft for this in the last tutorial, but a couple of commenters suggested that the condenser in equivalent exchange would work just as well. So here's the condenser right here and I have it all set up to pump except I don't have any ice in it to duplicate yet and it's using Mark III collectors as well so let's come back over here and let's just see how much ice the reactor requires per tick this is a very quick and dirty way of finding out how much your reactor requires we're losing two ice per tick now and as you can see it's taking one from each stack if you had just one stack in there it would only take one ice at a time and it would overheat so we need two ice per tick for this to work per reactor tick that is and here we are we're pumping out our ice it's coming out four blocks at a time because I have four pumps on the um, exit pipe and it's going pretty slow right now that's because the pumps aren't warmed up generally you want to have them glowing red so they pump quickly let's just get our ice together and let's see if the pumps can keep up with the reactors demand also you might want to note that um when ice is pumped into the reactor it will most often go into the highest top left spot or to the closest empty or closest ice stack that's missing some ice there we go now let's just add a little bit more ice in here so it doesn't explode as soon as we turn it on it will do that. Five seconds after I turned this on without ice while I was testing the torch, it um it almost turned the walls into lava. Or it almost turned the torch and the lever into lava anyway. Alright. So we got have our ice in here, let's turn it on. Let's see if the pumps can keep up. Sixty, fifty-nine, fifty-eight. Seven. They're keeping up with one stack, it looks like, but they're not able to keep up with the second stack. This is all fine and dandy if you're only using one block of ice at a time in your reactor. But this is not something you want if your reactor is using two blocks of ice per tick. Because eventually one stack will run out and it will only take one block from the, from the remaining stack. Now, let's have a look at the equivalent exchange w way of doing this. Instead of going through that complicated process with the thumb, it just, you put a block in there and bam, there you go. It's throwing out ice like nobody's business. We're gonna switch this to channel 3 I already I'm using the teleportation pipes because it's a much quicker way of doing things if you can afford them I would recommend them and here we go this is four pumps connected to this pipe and that's one ice block I have no idea why it's only pumping out one ice at a time it should be pumping out four so certainly this won't be able to keep up because it's only one block at a time so that means it's effectively four times slower than the Thomcraft way at the moment even though it's pumping out more ice 
even though it's duplicating more eyes, excuse me. This is obviously, go obviously going to overheat very quickly. There we go. So, I let the pumps heat up for a while. I didn't want you to sit through that wait. So let's put the ice back in there. And let's see if it goes any faster. Hopefully they just needed to warm up so they'd pump out more than one block at a time and it doesn't look like it had that effect. I just skipped ahead to filling up the reactor so I can give you an idea how much react how much power this reactor pumps out. So let's turn it on. And oh, one's in the wrong place. There we go. So now that we have all that in the right place, let's um, check the power. This is HV cable, by the way. You need it if you want to transfer more than 512 EU per T, or the cabling will explode. And here's the HV um, box. <laughs> oh man. You need this if you uh, want to put power in your MFSU. If you try to put more than 612 EUT in your EU at a time, it will explode. And for some reason, this cabling is only rated to take 512 EUT, but according to the reader, it's taking 640. That doesn't make any sense at all. I assume that's just a bug. That's just a bug they'll, um, they'll iron out. And our MFSU is absolutely gobbling up energy from the reactor. Look at that. <laughs> it's only been like five seconds and it's already up to 300,000. You also want to make sure that the teleportation pipe is linked up directly to the reactor core. If it's not hooked up, if it's hooked up to the chambers, it won't work the block will just fall on the ground and your reactor will explode after you realize that none of the ice blocks are going into it. Also, I have that redstone torch there because if a red if a if the reactor or the reactor chambers around it receive a redstone signal, they will the reactor will shut down. It it'll stop working. And that's something you would you would want to have when you're testing things like I am right now. Let's have a look and see. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still I'm still really confused about that 640 EU per t EUT right there. I, I keep worrying the MFSU, MFSU is going to explode and the video will be ruined. Alright, now let's see if this reactor will breed. Someone else mentioned that they wanted me to make them a breeder reactor, and I told them that this would ha this happens. You put the isotope cells in there, and in less than five seconds, you have a re-enriched uranium cell. That's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to take like 20 minutes. A long time. You're supposed to see a little life bar under these isotope cells and they're supposed to slowly charge up just like the same way the uranium cells dissipate. But somehow or another these isotope cells took less than five seconds to become re-enriched uranium cells. Once they've been re-enriched it only takes uh, coal dust and their reusable uranium cells again. Now because of this, I got confused, and I thought near-depleted uranium cells were what you're supposed to use. And obviously they didn't work, so I immediately tossed them and decided this was a glitch, a bug, or just something really, really awesome. That's that. Um, yeah, there's where I put the um, torch right there and the lever. 
it turns on that power block and it cuts out the power for the reactor. Alright, this is another configuration with the equivalent exchange condenser. When I was making this, I discovered that the condenser will only pump out one block at a time, no matter what it's producing. If it's producing hundreds and hundreds of cobble, then you're going to have a really hard time trying to get it out of there, because it's only going to go one block at a time. Now, to get around this, I put pumps on the five available sides that you see right now. So now it's pumping out five blocks at a time, one from each side. So, I thought I would use a diamond as fuel, but they're way too expensive for what we're trying to do, especially with only one collector next to the duplicator. So, let's try some glaze. Right now, I changed the channels of the teleporters to take the blaze powder over to the crucible. And in just a second, I'm going to update this design and try to make it a little bit more efficient because as it is right now it's going extremely slow and it's going so slow that I, I don't even know what to say how slow it is so just a second there you go and this is the finished design and it's pumping into the crucible it's giving us a good bit of thumb uh, I just want to note that this uses a relay and six collectors, six Mark III collectors. So, it's doing well by our duplicator, but you'll notice every couple seconds it'll hang up. As you just saw a second ago, it'll hang up every now and then. Nonetheless, let's see if it'll work. Pumping out four blocks at a time there. Well, this powder is giving us that little hang. Let's try gunpowder. That's another one of the substances I recommended we try. Let's place that. And it's making it pretty fast. It's about about half as fast as ice, maybe a fourth. And the gunpowder is now streaming into our crucible. It looks like it's going to work pretty well. The crucible is just emptying itself and refilling real, really quickly. And we're even getting a little bit of excess gunpowder from this operation. So, TNT! <laughs> and it looks like our duplicator is going just fine. It's not hanging, it's not stopping. And that's exactly what we want. And it even looks like we're getting excess thumb from this. Yeah, we sure are. That's good too, because uh, we could potentially use that excess thumb for other things, or even to hook up a second duplicator to make our reactor even more efficient. I'm I'm not gonna go into that though. That's that's completely up to you guys if you want to try and hook up a second duplicator. I imagine it would uh very quickly run out of um thom though. We're getting a lot of ice now. This whole stack of ice is only from the past couple minutes. We're missing quite a lot of ice. Let's see if uh Well, there you go. I guess that's it. I thought I had more there for a second. Uh, my bod. But as you can see, this is probably the best way to go. It's very expensive, but I imagine it's the best way to go. 
because you do make plenty of ice. And that's it for this video. Like, comment, and subscribe.